without intentionally planning it, we now have an animal rescue program here on our 16 acre homestead. Our mantra on living off grid is, you don't have to suffer. We get to live very comfortably, dare I say luxuriously maybe, but we do it totally on the cheap. Don't look for why you can't do this type of lifestyle. Try to research why you can. Hi guys, we are Finn and John and this is our tiny house. Come check it out. So one of the most fascinating things, in my opinion, about our little house here is that Finn's design of our outdoor kitchen. For over 10 years, our kitchen was inside the cabin area here. In fact, these double doors here, it was a solid wall until we busted it all out, had a little teeny window, and Finn never liked it. It was so dark in there all the time. What started off to be a traditional outdoor Thai kitchen from Finn's home a country of Thailand, but Finn had to put her flavor to it. It had to be all glass. So with me growing up, spending a lot of time in South Florida with hurricanes and storms, Finn's experience with monsoons and typhoons and stuff over in Thailand, it had to be rock solid, especially here in middle Georgia. We get a lot of straight wind storms, tornadoes. So we started off with the roof. We use these clear polycarbonate panels. From, uh, the company's called Palram. And these are also Miami Dade County approved for you know, their hurricanes and everything. We also went ahead and did the roofing a little bit different. Everything's spec for using one by fours for this type of for roofing and stuff. We went with two by fours to just make things a little bit more reinforced. Finn and I living in a small space, we never wanted to compromise on kitchen space. Some people ask, why do we have a, this big, long seven foot commercial sink? Our response is, is, why not? It is great. It's a three basin sink. It's really deep. It even has that commercial sprayer that works. And the beauty is right now, you can't even tell it's full of dirty dishes. We just hide everything in there when folks come out like today and we're able to hide stuff. So um, it works out really good. Finn's designs on everything. She likes everything eclectic. She likes everything unique. This chandelier here, it's an acrylic chandelier. I believe she bought it online off Facebook Marketplace for like 70 bucks. She buys everything really cheap. And why not have an acrylic chandelier in your kitchen? There's no rule that says you can't do it. And if there was a rule, Finn would be too bad, so sad, I'm gonna do it anyway. The very first two pieces of furniture that Finn and I built together is a big old 12 foot, 400 pound picnic table that's out there near the fire pit. But also this red table right here. We built this 12 and a half years ago, 13 years ago when we were first starting out. It was a workbench, it was a tool bench, it became my desk. It served as a kitchen table when the kitchen was inside. Now it's just counter space out here. So it, it works out, it's really versatile. It's on wheels, we can move it around. So this, this is really practical, has a multi-purpose to it. These Hooser counters that you see here, usually when you find them, they have the little back to them. They were all rotted and destroyed. These things probably like, you know, 100 years old, 80 years old or whatever. We got them, I think, for 25 bucks a piece. They're great for storage. They're really deep and it just gives us more counter space. You'll also notice that we have a lot of open shelving around here instead of closed cabinetry. We don't like to close ourselves in with high cabinets. Fun fact, this little cabinet right here, when we were in Thailand for the first time at our parents' house, they were putting food in these cabinets, like it's like prepared food and stuff, and not in the refrigerator because the food was consumed quickly. And that's exactly what we do with this cabinet here. We put lots of food in there and it's another way to store things without filling up the refrigerator. That's why we have such a tiny little refrigerator and the little tiny refrigerator doesn't suck a lot of juice from our solar. We're completely off grid here and, and that includes our water. We get all of our electricity from our solar system and we get all of our water from rainwater collection. The water actually is filtered many ways. We have like a five-step filter. And then for our drinking water, even the water that's coming out of the tap has gone through all those filtering and purification process. We then from the tap put the water inside of our two Berkey filters and is what we use for drinking and what we use for cooking. 
And then what's really cool is this old antique Windsor stove. This was a blessing in disguise. It came from an old hunting camp. This used to be a natural gas stove that we've converted over to propane. It's totally old school, but it works great. We have a biogas digester. And what we do is we treat our sewage, our sewage processing is through one of these biogas digesters. And to answer the number one question, no, our burgers do not smell and taste like poo. It's biogas, it's methane gas. Methane that we create with our biogas system is completely odor free. That's why it's always important to have a gas detector if you have a biogas system and you're using the stovetop inside your house. For us, we use it outside, so we don't have to worry about that. When I met Finn, Finn was living in London and I was living in Miami. We met through an online dating site. Two years after dating, Finn proposed to me and I eagerly, readily said yes. She had some terms and conditions and po quos. And the main ones were, we pick a country, because for those first two years of dating, we were back and forth, London, Miami, London, Miami. We pick a country, settle down, stop this international stupidity, because we were just burning money left and right, and that we build our own house together. And that's how we got into this. Our kitchen used to be totally in this area right here. We busted this whole wall out, and what we did then is we opened this whole space up. So it really made this a lot more spacious. It makes it our home look a lot more larger than what it is. And it made it a lot more comfortable. We went through a whole menagerie, a whole collection of different sitting areas here. And finally, we hit upon this one. It works out really good for us. It's very comfortable and it just works out really good. And it puts us in close pr proximity of our wood burning stove, which I believe this is called the Dutch West a wood burning stove. It's a high efficiency catalytic converter wood burning stove. Why does it have a catalytic converter in there? It takes the smoke in the partially unburnt wood particles and recycles them back into the stove and burns it as fuel. This way, the smoke emission going out of the smokestack is minimal compared to a standard wood burning stove. And we don't go through anywhere near as much wood. Finn actually got me a proper desk, which makes me feel a little bit more like I'm a, a little bit more legit, like I used to be in the business world. But the really cool thing is the, the lockers. We got these from a JCPenney distribution center back when JCPenney was shutting down all their stores and everything. I think we paid 80 bucks for them all. We're able to store so much things in there. Our mantra on living off grid is, you don't have to suffer. Sometimes I get the feeling people think living off grid means living in a tent in the bit, middle of a, a field of mud. And it really isn't, at least not for us. We get to live very comfortably, dare I say luxuriously maybe, but we do it totally on the cheap. But again, you're looking at 12 and a half plus years of work. This is where we sleep. This bed used to be what I call sectional. We had two RV size single bed mattresses and it made a L shaped here. And our bedroom was upstairs. Then when we moved the bedroom downstairs, we, we just disconnected this side that we built. And then we brought our mattress from upstairs down here and is, is how we did it. And, and it's a full side bed and super duper comfy. So we have a storage down here. And then underneath the mattress here, you can there's actually a lift three foot by three foot hatch up. that you pull the mattress off and you can pull the hatch out and you can access storage here. I think the best advice that we can give to folks based upon our experience, believe in yourself and do what you want to do. We get a comment similar to this a lot online. And it's, I can't do that because, and then they have their reason. Our point being is, is that it's really, really easy to think about the reasons why we can't do something, but don't look for why you can't do this type of lifestyle. Try to research why you can.
So now we're in our bathroom, the greenhouse bathroom, the ever so oh my gosh bathroom. And by the reason I say oh my gosh bathroom isn't because of public response. It's because when Finn first suggested doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, are you out of your mind? I what? did not say- Are you talking about oh, me? Oh shoot, what? where did you come from? Good Lord. So Finn has always wanted a greenhouse bathroom. We had no blueprint, we had no design. Basically, I went, we're gonna build this thing out of two by fours, we're gonna frame this thing out, and we just started building it. Question we get a lot from folks, how do you plumb your house? We plumb it just like a regular house. We just use PVC piping, Schedule 40 piping, and we just glued it all together with PVC approved glue and called it a day. The gray water for our kitchen sink and the gray water for the bathtub all pipe into the garden beds out here. We use non-detergent Castile soaps, so the soaps don't have any negative impact on the plants. We're stationary here on our homestead, so we really like our bio toilet from Home Biogas, and I mentioned when we were talking in the kitchen about our biogas digester, so we flush directly into our biogas digester. But we're upgrading our biogas system, so we're draining it right now. So we disconnected the bio toilet and we're using one of our three Nature's Head right now. The thing we like about the Nature's Head, no plumbing required. And we empty the contents of the Nature's Head into our humanure composting system out back here. Look it up and read it before you start passing judgment. The liquid, the urine that goes in the canteen, we dilute it 50-50 with our rainwater and we use that in our gardens or we pour it straight between our, in the ground, on the ground, in between our chicken coops and the tree line and it's a great predator deterrent. It keeps the uh, raccoons and possums and foxes away. Finn and I realized very early in our relationship that we both have a mutual love for four-legged and two-legged uh, furry, feathery, finny, scaly creatures. So without intentionally planning it, we now have an animal rescue program here on our 16-acre homestead. We're also a no-kill homestead. We have, we have lots of livestock out here, but every single one of them is here to live the best life they can, forever homes. And the animals that are livestock that do get rehomed, we do not sell them. And they're gifted to for new forever homes. You know, we said that we rescue animals. In fact, these animals actually rescue us. So if you'd like to visit us online, you can find us at Beloved Cabin, but you can really find most of our content and our larger account at United Tiny House. Thank you for watching our video. That'll do, donkey. That'll do.